Great to be joined by Brian Jones, now head coach of the North County Raiders, uh, right here on Knuckleball Prime Time or uh, the pregame show. If you're watching it, of course, uh, on uh, Parkland Sports Live and the North County Raiders, three and three, I have a pair of three and three teams, in fact, in, in Windsor and North County. Uh, North County has uh, played a good rugged schedule and, and, and coach Jones, I remember talking with you even before the year started and you were optimistic and confident and felt like your guys had had a nice off season and improved. You had some experience back, uh, along your lines that you felt like would be a strength of the team. And uh, in fact, had some guys back in the backfield as well, but you had a new signal caller. Um, and his name is Brady McClure. And I've been impressed with this young man as well. Uh, but let's talk a little bit, I think, first of all, kind of about the the lines, uh, the diff- defensive and offensive fronts for you guys uh, now just a little bit more than halfway through the season. Uh, have they kind of led the way like you thought they would this year? Yeah, I think so. Um, if you look at our, the, the scores of our game and how we ha- games and how we scored a majority of our points and just uh, what what our offense is, has been up to this point in the season, I think uh, I think you would say that that it's because of, of those guys up front and uh, nothing uh, nothing surprising out of them. We we kind of expected to lean on those guys a lot this year um, to, to you know to establish our run game and, and to also uh, you know establish our our, uh, our defensive uh, run stopping plan. Our def- you know. Um, and and so far that they've uh, they've done a nice job at that. The teams that have uh, the teams that have really gotten after us offensively has been uh, you know have have been teams that can throw the ball on us. And I've been you know I feel really good for the most part about uh, about you know the way we've uh, defended the run this year when we've seen you know um, run dominant offenses and um, you know just really really proud of the way those guys have played. They've they've met expectations that's for sure. In fact, you you started the season against one of those teams. Farmington has proven to be a very good running team, especially here lately when they've run the ball uh, all over some folks. But you guys were very stern against them in that opener, in that win, and and uh, you know we kind of talk about opening you know, the season against a rival and and uh, another good ball club. And how much was it kind of a a boost or a, uh, a kind of a shot in the arm to to start the year for your guys with a win like that against Farmington? Well, I think that's a you know it, it's a, it's definitely a game that everybody circles on the schedule, um, r- regardless of whether you're wearing blue and gold on Friday nights or black and gold on Friday nights. You know, everybody uh, everybody's tuned into the Farmington North County game. You know, very similar to uh, you know everybody tunes into the Festus Hillsboro game or the Cape Jackson game or the Valley St. Jen game. You know, it's just always a, a big uh, you, you know um, what trademark game that, that, that you have each season in our area and, and uh, you know people really turn out for it and uh, so to, to get a win and to, you know start the season on a good note and uh, you know get a win against a team that, that that's really your rival um, it was a big game no doubt. Coach, we had kind of a, a fun time uh, here on Knuckleball Primetime doing uh, kind of a, a midseason football roundtable where we got to talk about uh, a lot of the different teams around the area. And and we kind of classified your backfield as a backfield that has not only a lightning and a thunder, but really two of each because McClure you could kind of classify as a running back because he's a very good running quarterback as well. But w- when you've got Lashley and Cook uh, back there to kind of pound the rock at people, and then you've got Whitfield who's got some good wheels. And, and some good cutback maneuvers and McClure with the same. You've really got a lot of good options back there. You, you definitely have to prepare for our uh, our run game if, if, if you're an opposing defense. And, and we've proved th- proven throughout the season up to this point that there's uh, there's several different guys that you have to account for at, at any time and, and regardless of, of what formation we're in. And uh, th- th- there's different guys that, that can hurt you if you're not paying attention to them. Um, you know, you, you mentioned uh, – Mentioned all those guys. Um, Aaron has, has kind of been injury ridden most of the year, and we, we've uh, we've yet to see what he can do, except for maybe in the Desoto game. He kind of he kind of show uh, proven you know what he's capable of in the Desoto game. Um, Brady is um, you know Brady's a guy that we probably ha- have had to lean on a little more than we had anticipated, um, and and he is really you know, stepped up to the challenge, performed well. Um, Noah, we, we wasn't sure what we was going to get out of Noah for sure. We knew he was a good player. We just uh, kind of spent the summer um, moving him around in positions, and he finally settled in at, at fullback, and he's really taken to it. And he's, uh, you know, we haven't had a, a, a what we would consider a true fullback in the program probably since Clayton 
um, back in, you know, in 20 and 21. So it's nice to have a guy that you, you can hand it off to and, and he's going to get you two or three yards at any, any time you need it. And then, of course, Landon, um, La- what a surprise Landon's been. I don't think uh, – you know, I think his uh, his second carry at Farmington was that one that went for about 50 yards and set up uh, set up our, our first score of the second half. And um, you know, he's just a, a powerful runner, and it's it's nothing flashy, but he he's just kind of uh, he's hard to tackle when he gets downhill, and he can really turn his legs and and drive out of some tackles. And and um, you know, he's just a, he's deceptively strong. And and uh, you're right. Once he you know if he gets a gap or if he gets loose, he's definitely hard to catch. Brian Jones, North County head football coach, joining us in the barn tonight, right here on Knuckleball Prime Time, and talking a little North County football with their game against Windsor coming up. Uh, whether it's uh, well in a day or uh, in just a few minutes, if you're watching our pregame show on Parkland Sports Live, and I remember Coach Jones talking with you at the very beginning of the year, and you said there are zero games on our schedule that you can just mark as a win, that you can just mark as, hey, we're going to show up and that's a W. Uh, And I really think here lately that's proven to be maybe even more true. DeSoto gets the win uh, against a Fredericktown team who's improved just last week. Uh, So we were just kind of talking about those teams that you usually can count on a win and it's not so automatic anymore. And I think kind of what you said at the beginning year is probably proven to be more true uh, just week after week. You know, I'll tell you, Chad, in, in Southeast Missouri, uh, this has been the craziest football year uh, as far as scores go that, that I've ever seen. You, you know, um, um, you know, Potosi started out with the, with the huge romp over St. Clair. Then St. Clair turned around and, and played Farmington within six points. And then Farmington goes to Popper Bluff the next week, and, and Popper Bluff plays Farmington with, with, within a few points. And then, you, you know, you uh, we play Glenwood. Who who lost to uh, Edwardsville, Illinois, by by just a score uh, on the Saturday after we played Farmington, and then Edwardsville turns around and beats Jackson the way they did, and then Jackson turns around and beats Cape the way they did, and then you got St. Vincent down there that that I don't know that anybody expected uh, expected what they've done this year, and you know tickled to death for them, and then you got you know Coach Schmidt, uh, which shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that knows Coach Schmidt has got the dragons turned around and headed in the right direction. And they've, they've really capitalized on, on some opportunities this year. And, and there's starting to be some excitement again in, in, uh, in dragon town, as far as their football program goes. And then you got, um, you, you know, it's just, uh, it's, and then you got it's, central it's, winning in multiple. Yeah, and you got time, central. Right? Yeah, you got central that's supposed to uh, that's supposed to have a down year, and they just keep grinding out wins, and uh, you know, uh, two overtime wins, and, and down to the wire with, with Potosi, and I mean, it, it's just, it, it, I, I'm glad I'm a. This is one of those years. I'm glad I'm a coach and not a prognosticator because I wouldn't be very good this year with with, with the way that the scores have gone. Yeah, I, I texted Coach Schweiss after that last one against Potosi. I said, wow, that was exciting. And all he could text back was, yeah, it was for you. But, you know, <laughs> it, maybe not so much for him. And, wanna, you know, I also want to point out, you mentioned that Glenwood Ball Club that you guys played. So you had a lead in the fourth quarter, and that thing was back and forth the whole way. So, yeah, so. Correct. yeah it's just uh, I, I don't know what to make of any of it right now. And I guess, you, you know. We might not know what to make of it till we get to, to week 10 and, and they, uh, they, they start posting the district brackets. We've got, uh, and let's kind of talk a little bit about the district. We'll talk about, of course, Windsor as well, but th- this really is an important game in terms of some district seating, too. I know Windsor's all the way at the bottom of the district seating right now, and you guys are right in the middle, but some people are bunched up, and I know that you'd love to have a home game to start that district. Yeah, that's huge. It's, you know, anytime you can get a, an extra home game on the season, it's unaccounted for. It's a big deal. It's a big, you know, big deal for the gate. It's a big deal for concessions and 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 you know for the the kids that aren't involved in football, but our our marching band and, and our cheer squad and and Raiderettes, and then ultimately us getting to play in front of you know getting to play on our home field um, to con- you know hopefully continue the season. So yeah, that, that's all big stuff. But you're right. Um, if you look at the schedule, the schedules um, of our opponents in our district, you know, you look at the remaining schedules. Um, I think we probably have the toughest one, at least uh, by current records. Um, so th- there's going to be, you know, there's the the, the shuffling in, in the district seating isn't over yet, and and it's not going to be over for a while. And, and some some crazy things are going to happen. I think um, b- between now and, and the time they set them, you know. 
in, in three weeks, I guess. Um, but I could see this being a year kind of like the 2018 year was or the 2019 year where it's down to the wire and there's going to be some teams that are jumping other teams by, you know, hundreds of a point. I, I think the, uh, I think the final district uh, points and district standings are, are probably going to be that, that tight for class four district one. St. Clair and Sullivan, of course, for you down the road in eight weeks, number eight and nine. Homecoming this week, well, as a football guy, as a football coach, what's the best and the worst part of homecoming? Uh, there, there is no best part of homecoming. I knew it. it, it it's uh, the, the, the best part's when you walk off the field after the, after the game's over and, and, and you hope you, you're victorious. That, that's the best part. Um, I, I, you know, I'm one of those guys, I didn't really enjoy homecoming when I, as a player. And, and I sure don't enjoy the uh, homecoming week as a coach, and, and I never have. It's just uh, – it's one distraction after another. And, um, you know, a couple of years ago, one of the negative things of COVID was, you know, they shut down a lot of the social activities. Well, when they came back or when they – or they moved them off campus. So now homecoming lasts, you know, two weeks as opposed to one because the float building actually starts a week earlier off, you know, off campus, and, and it's it's not uh, regulated by the school anymore so um, it starts two weeks earlier. So now, you know, it's just it, it's extended a week of uh, of um, hecticness, I guess you could say, if that's a word. And uh, it, it's just uh, but by the time we get to the to the end of Friday's game, um, there's going to be a big relief side by by a lot of people. So Windsor coming to town uh, and uh, Windsor's a, a club uh, record wise like you guys. Three and three schedules are much different, uh, but this is against a, a coach that that you know pretty well. I know the coaching fraternity is a tight one anyway, but uh, you know you faced Lee Freeman and he had some very good ball clubs when he he's at Hillsborough. We talked about you guys being a, a run first team. Uh, Windsor might be even more so. Three hundred eleven yards rushing per game, eighteen yards passing. So you know Lee loves to pound the pound the thing right at you. Yeah, absolutely. And his teams are, are always, uh, they're always physical. They always get off the ball well, and he's always got some good runners. And, you know, what we're seeing on film right now out of uh, out of the Owls is, okay, so um, you talked about the 311. It, it might be one, it might be two, it might be two, it might be no gain. And then all of a sudden, you, you know, they bust one for 45 or 50. And that's the ones that, that, that just kill you defensively because it doesn't get your, your defense off the field. And they just get wore down um, as the night goes, and and then as the night goes, when they're able to, to do that, and they keep pounding you for a couple yards here and there, and then they bust one. You know, the, those long plays start becoming more common because your defense is wore out. So um, they're definitely. We got a lot of film on on uh, Windsor. Um, they've improved dramatically from their first week to to what we saw. Uh, last week against Hillsborough, e even in the loss, that they are a totally different football team, and um, things are really starting to come together for them, and, and it's starting to look like look like a Coach Freeman offense. A little bit like you guys, Coach. They they have a lot of options too. A running back, their their headliner, I suppose you could call him, is Logan Wilson, who runs for just under one seventeen a game. But they have another guy that runs for just about a hundred a game as well, and Willie Coleman the third, ninety five point five a game. And then Landon Robbins is rushing for fifty six a ball game as well. So the, the, you know, if you, if you favor one guy too much, there's another guy too. So that, is that also a factor you talked about as the game goes on? Sometimes when the defense gets worn out, they can pop those uh, big ones on you it also is the balance that they can show with the different running backs does that give them kind of the ability to do that as well sure and and the backs that you mentioned um you know one of them is kind of a, a more uh, fast elusive shifty kind of back and one of them is a, a run right at your power back that when he gets loose he's hard to bring down and he's hard to catch um so you have to you know you have to be aware of that as well and, and, and plan for that and then another thing you have to plan for with, with uh you know, with with Coach Freeman's offense is all the misdirection. You know, your 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 line or your you know your defense has to be disciplined, S similar to Farmington, but maybe even maybe even a, a little bit worse because I, th I think they're doing more misdirection now than than what we saw out of the Knights. But you, your your def or your defensive uh, front and your linebackers, you know, they can't get caught up with all the misdirection because what happens is you end up over pursuing or pursuing the wrong way. And, and you get out of your, you know, you get out of your assignment and, and now they're off to the races. And then, you know, you mentioned they're passing for 18 yards a game. 
Well, what happens there too, and, and, and it was evident last week when they played Hillsborough, is yeah, they may be passing for 18 yards a game, but they're going to catch you when you're not expecting the pass, and they're going to get you for one for 65 or 70. And, and that's usually the ones that really hurt. So um, we've yeah. talked a lot this week about, you know, about being mentally focused and really trusting our reads defensively. And, and as you brought up, you know, when you got a team that's, that's really pounding you, not only do, does, do you get wore out physically, you also get wore out mentally. And then that's when, you know, that's when an offense like, like Windsor runs really starts to take advantage of you. Coach, your program had, I think, what what you could call a special moment earlier this year when Will Compton came back and, and then they put a banner up uh, on the box uh, that commemorates his high school number there. Uh, I know that you gave him a hug and had a nice talk and saw before the game they gave him the key to the city and had a nice honor as well. Uh, do, do your players – kind of connect with him? Are they aware of his impact and his success? Of course, he was a great player at Nebraska and went on to play for three NFL teams uh, and, and now is uh, very uh, successful in podcasting. Uh, but but are, are your players kind of you know aware of some of the things he did? And is that something that, that resonated with them and fired them up this year? Um, they, they enjoyed having him around, no doubt. And we always enjoy when Will comes home. I think the last time he'd been home for a football game was the, uh, what was the Saturday we played Vashon. And, um, so it, it was, it was fun to see him that day, you know, that time too. And, and, and for that game, he actually made a special trip up, uh, for the Vashon game, just because it had been so long since we had been in, you know, had made it into the postseason. Um, so yeah, we always enjoy when he, when he's here and, uh, you know, as far as our kids and, and, how they identify with Will. Um, a lot of these guys, you know, they, they were kind of, you know, they were young. Um, obviously, they were real little, and some of them not even born when, when Will was, was playing high school football. So that meant they were really, you know, they were just, you know, kids, uh, preschoolers and, and, and early elementary when he was at Nebraska. And then, you know, some of them might remember, you know, his NFL days, but probably more, from what they've been told, but they're all tuned into his podcast. That's for sure. That's how those guys really identify with him is, is with the, uh, the podcast and, and what he does uh, with it. All right. Well, coach, uh, do, do you go through say, you know, Hey, here guys, these are two of the three things that we have to do tonight to win tonight's ball game. Did you kind of have bullet points or how do you treat kind of those important aspects of what you feel like your team has to do uh, during a certain ball game? Oh sure, yeah. There's, there's, uh, you know, offensively, there's, there's things that we we really focus on that we w we want to really be good at each week, and uh, you know, to try to take advantage of, of what we see on film, def uh, you know, from from the opposing team's defenses, and then the same thing defensively. You know, um, d defensively, we look at a lot of, we try to look at a lot of if thens. Okay, if a team does this and we stop it, then they're going to do this. Uh, or what's the uh, you know what are they going to do that that's what's the play off this play, and um, you know try to get our kids ready for that and thinking that way. So when they see something, then they know that, okay, the the next thing in the prog or progression is probably going to be this play. So that, that it's been a lot of that this week in, in pre uh, preparing for the Owls more so than than probably you know the, the two previous weeks just because we got a lot of. Uh, you know, we got a lot of personal history with Coach Freeman, even though he's the first year coach at Windsor. You know, this is the, I guess, the fourth time that, that, that we've squared off against each other when, when it comes to head to head. And then both, shoot, we have, um, you, you know, when Coach McDowell was at North County and Coach Robbins was was at Hillsboro, and 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 you know, we were both assistants. Um, you know, there there was probably five, I guess, five years there. That, that we, uh, you know, we're all on opposing sidelines coaching against each other. So definitely some history there. And, and uh, you, you know, kind of uh, I think if, if you talk to him, he's going to probably kind of tell you the same thing about what he, he would expect out, out of what, you know, he anticipates us uh, or what he anticipates uh, seeing from us Friday night. Coach Jones, thanks for joining us on Knuckleball Primetime. And we look forward to having your ball game tonight on Parkland Sports Live. We appreciate it. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate have you guys having me on again. But to Brian Jones, said man for the North County Raiders, joining us right here on Knuckleball Prime Time, and we're looking forward to that game, North County and Windsor on Parkland Sports Live.